What's going on guys? Welcome to the next video in my how-to series on how to do a low-budget medieval battle sequence. Pop it. Last week we went over preparation. Everything you need to prepare for so on the shoot day you're ready to go. Today we're going to go over cinematography which is putting all the prep work into action how to do it, what lenses to use, what camera I was using, Sony a7. I can't actually show that to you because I'm using it right now. A huge part of how this is shot is of course to make it look like you have more people than you actually do. Uh, for this shoot, I think it was about 30. Last week, I think I said like 40. No, I think it was like 30. Uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, a huge part of how you shoot this is how to make the amount of number that you have present, how to double it or triple it or quadruple it. So without further ado, let's hit these lenses. The first lens, I didn't really use too much, but I'm gonna show it to you guys anyway. 24 millimeter wide angle lens. I didn't really use it that much because again, we didn't have two, 300 people. So I kind of strayed away from using it, but I, I think I use it a few times, a few times, maybe. The second one a 50 millimeter lens, all your tight shots, everything that's close, everything, all the shots where you have a bunch of people grouped up together and you wanna make it feel intense, tight, crazy, 50 millimeter right here, that's, you're gonna need one of these. The next one, 135 millimeter. This thing, this bad boy right here, this makes the magic happen. I'll explain to you later um, what, this, uh, what this lens can do and how it makes everything you, you shoot look uh, pretty, pretty crazy. Let's get into it. All right guys, before we get into this, um, I'm gonna just, just for clarification, uh, this battle scene is uh, between the Danes and the Estonians based off the Battle of Linonise during the Northern Crusades. Um, so on the left side here, we have the Danes. On the right side, we have the Estonians. This is a part of the sequence where the Danes open up the shield wall and the Estonians come crashing in. Uh, you can't see me in here, but I believe I'm on the right side. Okay. And uh, what happens here, there I am. <laughs> uh, I have the 50 millimeter. This is shot with 50 millimeter because I want everything close. Now, of course, I have some of the guys also stacked on where the guys are going to fall. So when they do fall through, the camera follows them and I still have guys in the background just to make it seem, uh, seem packed. All right, so we're rolling and here is the action. We've got the fog machine, of course. Um, as soon as they fall in, boom, there it is. So you see, as soon as they fall in, wherever they're falling in, the camera follows them. And I, I still have people in the background. You want to set up your shot in a way where uh, wherever the action is flowing, there's still guys who are covering that space. Get inside the action, get close. If you get hit, you get hit, baby, that's it. It's no problem. You see what we have here? Everyone is bunched up into a group, okay? They're filling up the whole frame. There's not one empty spot in the frame, all right? Which, of course, from the audience perspective, when you look at that, you're like, oh, wow, there, there must be a lot of people over there. In all actuality, it's just this. That's all it is. Throwing dirt into the crowd makes it just look busier. So get into that action. Now, whether they're actually doing a lot of action or not doesn't matter because the camera is moving so much uh, and, and you're having dirt being thrown into the scene, it looks very busy, it looks very chaotic, okay? And what is a battle if not chaos? So capture that feeling by doing that. I would say if you have a gimbal, I don't care how much money you spend on a gimbal, like don't use it. Don't use a gimbal, it's too smooth, you know? This, you want something gritty. You want something gritty, something raw, something real. This is one of those shots that looks really cool, it looks really good, but in reality, it is one of the most ridiculous things you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> uh, this, 
this shot here, uh, you're not gonna be able to see me uh, because I am using the 135, this bad boy right here. What it does is basically I can stand as far back as possible, but I am very close to my subject, okay? It flattens out the image. Um, right now, if you look at the screen, uh, what was in what was in focus is my friend Yusi, the guy who's playing the king, uh, King Valdemar II. Uh, he's right there in the middle of the screen, wearing the red. He's got a crown on. Come on, you can't miss him. <laughs> um, I am far to the left of the screen. I'm off the screen, okay. But through the lens, I am. I'm. I'm very close to him. I'm very close to what he's doing. I see everything that he's seeing. Uh, the benefit of having this kind of lens is if you see, I have a row of guys on the left and a row of guys on the right, okay? And this is what I'm gonna play for you right now and you're gonna see what happens, okay? Here we go, we're playing and that's it. These guys are able to run across, across, the, run across the frame. Doesn't seem like much, doesn't seem like much, but through the camera, it's huge. Before I, t before I continue with the camera work and, and so on and so forth, you want aesthetic. And what you're seeing here is the fan, is the fan and the fog machine working together. Um, again, you want to go off the chaos. You want to go off the fast pace, motion, whatever, whatever. And having a fog machine sometimes just isn't enough. Uh, you need to have that fog blasting out, uh, smoke blasting out. So what you do here, just a nice little trick, uh, is just taking the fog machine, putting the fan in front of it and blasting that fog. You can see how fast that fog is moving. Bada bing, <laughs> it's great. The Rampart scene, probably my favorite sequence in the battle scene, is another example of the greatness that comes out of the 135 millimeter lens. <laughs> um, you're gonna see here when I play it, uh, there's a good distance between me and my friend Gunnerman, the guy who's walking, uh, who's walking, <laughs> fighting his way from one point of the Rampart to the other. Uh, basically what I did behind him, you can't really see it too much, uh, but everyone that was present is stacked behind him. Okay, now in front of him, closer to me, there's maybe one, two, three, four, five guys. We got five guys. Now I gave them instruction. I said, listen, when I, when I pass by you, I want you to cross over the camera. Because again, with the 135, since there's so much distance between me and the subject, I can have the guys uh, you know, cross over the frame to make it look crazier, make it look busier. Um, so here, let's go ahead and play this out. And you see, as soon as I pass by, boom, there it is. Boom, these guys are just gonna keep crossing. All right, there it is. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, looks simple enough. But because of that lens, uh, let's pause it. Because of that lens, uh, it, it makes it look so much tighter. What's great about this lens also is during the sequence, if you look at it, it looks like he's really hitting somebody. You can actually have them really swing the sword, really get, you know, have these intense motions, but still being farther away from the guy who he is supposedly hitting. The very first hit, he actually doesn't hit anybody. There's nobody there. The sound tells you that he did. He looks like he's stabbing people. He looks like he's running through them, you know, bang, bang, bang. Like he's going to town. It looks like he's freaking nailing them. That is again, part of the magic of a 135 millimeter lens. Pop that. Having another camera out there is definitely helpful. My friend Chris was there with his Nikon. Uh, he had it settled on a gimbal. Uh, he was actually just there to get behind the scenes footage but of course, if you got another camera on hand, like you might as well put it to use, you know? Uh, so more often than not, Chris was taking different angles of shots that I was doing. And a lot of his shots made it into the final cut that made certain sequences really come full circle.
My friend Fiorello was out there with his drone. Um, having a drone is no bad thing at all. You know, he would fly it over people's heads, you know, like you see here uh, for the shield wall just to get some nice aerial footage. Definitely very, very helpful. Well, that's the end of the video, guys. If you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and ask in the comments below, or you can wait for the Q&A that I'm gonna do, the live q and I'm gonna do on the channel. Uh, when I'm done with this little mini series, uh, I'll probably give you a more detailed answer then because I'm more of a talker, not a texter, typer, whatever. Next week, I'm gonna go into directing. How do you know if you're getting the right shot, the wrong shot, the right emotion out of your actors or the wrong emotion out of your actors? Uh, how to talk to them, how to keep the adrenaline high, how to keep them pumped up, um, how to direct. How to direct, it's very simple, Just directing. <laughs> Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. See you guys next week, pop off.